Hello, I'm Jim Van Burek, an industrial minerals geologist with the province of Manitoba, the Manitoba Geological Survey. I'm standing in front of a large uh, rock cliff face just over my left shoulder uh, that is actually one of about four known soapstone localities in Manitoba. Uh, soapstone is a very soft rock. It's comprised mainly of talc. Uh, talc is one of the softest, if not the softest, minerals known. Hard, most scale of hardness of one. Uh, in contrast to that, uh, the hardness for diamond is 10. So this is right at the uh, most softest uh, mineral uh, that is known is talc. Uh, the talc was formed probably as a result of shearing and fracturing of uh, rock that uh, had a fairly high chlorite uh, content uh, in the past. And it was probably introduced into the rock uh, at some point uh, that uh, may have been a, a vein uh, uh, penetrating uh, of the rock, uh, uh, an intrusive event. Uh, the host rock in the overall area tends to be granitic. It, it tends to look like a granite rock, a typical pink uh, felspar uh, bearing uh, rock with quartz and mica. But this particular portion uh, of the rock over to uh, my left here has a fair amount of uh, mafic minerals in them. And this is the kind of uh, rock material that is prized by carvers. Uh, we're uh, only about six miles, uh, excuse me, six kilometers north of the bridge over the Wanapagal River at this point along this winter road. And uh, so this particular site was very accessible for uh, the uh, carvers in the past to get small pieces, in most cases, of rock to carve. It's uh, the uh, kind of stone which uh, the, the people who uh, are talented and skilled can make into beautiful figurines, uh, the little owls or uh, uh, little uh, bears. That kind of uh, carving uh, is done. And uh, it is a bit of a, a local industry uh, on the part of some carvers. Now, this particular outcrop is a little bit uh, strange uh, in the sense that it's within a road allowance. Uh, so therefore, even though there have been quarry leases taken out over the top of this, uh, technically we're not within a, a quarry lease, even if there was one in, in place today, uh, it would be considered to be part of the road allowance. So there is really no problem with access. It's still advisable to wear a uh, helmet over uh, on your head. Uh, there is a fairly steep cliff face, so uh, uh, I'm dressed for a uh, true quarry uh, 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 the situation. You certainly don't want to see a rock come tumbling down. Now we're at the cliff face, which is basically, I, I think at this point, again, an altered volcanic rock. It becomes very difficult to really do detailed uh, investigation as to what we might be looking at. But you can see that somebody has done etchings with maybe a geological hammer, like the one I've got here. And this portion in here would be considered to be soapstone. It's talc rich. And if I take my hammer and do a line, it will actually leave a trace of my pick uh, end of my hammer in through here. So, it definitely shows this rock is soft. If I move up to here and try to do the same, uh, there appears to be some talc or soapstone along here. Shows it's almost all talc. Talc is the same thing that you would make baby powder out of. Talcum powder is made of talc. Here's a chunk of soapstone. And if you rub your fingers on it, you can feel that it is quite smooth, almost chalky kind of feel to it. Um, and you have the feeling that if you wet it down and uh, smooth your hand around it, you would end up with a uh, fairly uh, soft or soft dish, if there's such a word, uh, kind of rock that you could do all sorts of 
moving stuff around to make some kind of either uh, indentation or a gouge. And a lot of rocks, you can't do that. So as to how extensive this soapstone is and this uh, mass, is, it's hard to tell. Along on this uh, wall straight ahead of me over here, uh, there appears to be almost a, a thickness to the uh, uh, coating on the uh, surface. And the coating tends to be, it looks like a, a, what we would call a fault gouge. Uh, it is something that two masses of rock moved past each other, one against the other, and did a lot of grinding and smoothing out. And as a result, they ended up changing the nature of that rock uh, from what it may have been in the past, a chloride schist, and maybe changing it into talc, uh, the chemical and heat uh, alteration of that particular surface. But uh, the rock was probably uh, fairly uh, uh, rich in, in the uh, minerals, the chloride minerals in the first place. Here the uh, rock has been scraped uh, previous to uh, me coming here by uh, I guess a number of people trying to evaluate the amount of soapstone that might be present at this particular uh, rock outcrop. And uh, they've used their hammer probably or some kind of instrument to uh, do gouges into the rock. So if I try to duplicate what they did, if I start rubbing over here, we can see if by chance this seems to be the same kind of softness that they had there. And this seems to be a little bit harder, but uh, maybe not that much. Let's try it where uh, they uh, closer into here. Yes, and you can see how the stone is turning whitish and having uh, powder uh, developing on here. So there seems to be a bit of a pod in through here and maybe extending off to my right uh, where they have traced it. Uh, geologically, it's interesting. Uh, we can see lines going across the outcrop in through here. These lines are glacial. This is uh, uh, glaciation, uh, uh, striations from the glaciers that passed over here. But then there is banding that we can see in through here. There's a thin vein, uh, probably quartz and feldspar. There's another parallel one there. And it looks like uh, that this uh, area uh, has been intruded by these uh, smaller veins. Now this one is a bit uh, intriguing to me because it almost seems to have a pillow uh, kind of appearance to it. It sort of bends like a pillow structure, which is quite typical in uh, uh, volcanic uh, lava, you get a, what is called a selvage edge, which is a darker, blacker, a more glassy uh, a contact zone of one pillow and the other. So it's not impossible that these, uh, some of these are stretched pillows. Pillows tend to be more uh, flat on the bottom and round on top. But when you, they're stretched, they get pulled like toffee and they get stretched right out. And so it wouldn't be impossible that we could have a collection of uh, pillows at uh, this particular outcrop. Again, speaking to its volcanic origin, of course, all of the rocks in the Canadian Shield have been metamorphosed. They're all rocks that range from two to four billion years in age. So they're uh, quite, quite old. Uh, in relation to much younger uh, rock units that can be found in Manitoba, uh, stuff that might be only uh, 500 million, uh, essentially a baby compared to uh, these rocks. These are the grandfather rocks of, of Manitoba. They are the oldest rocks almost in the world, uh, not quite, but uh, pretty close. I think they refer to this as tigmatic folding in through the rock and it cuts across uh, the previous rock. Uh, again, we can see a quartzo felspathic vein in there. And they all seem to be extending across, even into the area where they've done scraping. You can still see the much harder uh, veinlets that are crisscrossing the overall uh, uh, pattern of the striations of the glaciers. So these came 
much, much earlier in the geological time. The glacial polish, of course, much later. Uh, making the striations that you see on the outcrop. So a lot of geology happening on top. A little bit of, I guess, would be a, a glacial till or a silty rich till here on the surface with these little cobbles. With that, uh, it gives you an idea of what soapstone does look like. It is, like I said, one of the uh, four known uh, soapstone occurrences. Uh, it does, uh, follow along a trend of ultramafic rocks that extends all the way uh, to the east uh, to uh, Beset along the Rice Lake Greenstone Belt. And we're at almost at the farthest uh, uh, western point of that belt before it turns and parallels the eastern shore of Lake Winnipeg. It goes up to uh, another set of small islands along the east uh, shore called Pipestone Rock where there is exactly the same kind of soapstone found and uh, there are carvers that have uh, visited that site and have collected uh, some samples. Uh, it is now I believe a protected area and so uh, it's probably future collections are going to be uh, uh, very limited. And that's our visit uh, to uh, one of the few uh, known soapstone localities in Manitoba. <music>